everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and welcome to Week in Review, where I talk about games, well, the whole Dice Tower team is going to talk about games that we played in the last couple weeks. Actually, we, you normally do one week. We didn't put one of these out last week, so I'm going to talk about a few games and things that we played. We give you kind of short summaries here, and then if you want to see the full review, check the description in the links, or check the links in the description. Hmm, that makes more sense. Anyway, let's get going. Hey, hey, everybody, I'm Zeke Garcia. Here's what I did last week and the week before that. Uh, I did a review of three different expansions, small expansions for game. Uh, we started with Century Golden Deals, which I gave a 6 out of 10 to. This is a small deck of card, like transparencies, in which you slide a transparent card in front of the regular Century Spice Road cards, and it changes the thing. It's really fiddly though, you have to unsleeve this entire deck and re-sleeve it every time you play, and then what it does change seems to be so subtle and opens up some of the fun tension I had with the game originally, where now the cards can just kind of be anything, they can do anything you want them to. I found it robbed the game of some of the tightness, some of the restrictions that I found to be fun in the first place. <clears throat> so that's Century Golden Deals. Uh, I did a review for uh, the Canvas Finishing Touches expansion. I gave this one a 7 out of 10. Uh, this one's neat. It gives the player something to compete for because Canvas is generally so solitaire. Uh, and I like what it's adding. There's a couple of new symbols. There's these frames you compete for. I like it just fine. I did not think it was particularly innovative. Uh, and it's something I would be happy to throw in. But it benefits from a larger player count, otherwise that competition doesn't really uh, come through as much. And then I uh, did the Evergreen expansion Pines and Cacti, which I gave an 8 out of 10. It's a great little expansion, very small. Just a couple of little modules in there, but they liven up the game quite a bit. They let you change how the game is going to score, the things that, and how they behave. And I really enjoy the two little modules in there. I like the cacti a little bit better, but they're both good. And uh, give you really neat wooden pieces you can throw into your copy of Evergreen. Now, besides that, I uh, did three games. I reviewed, uh, these are in the same video as, as three game spinoffs. So I've got Tucana Builders, which I gave a 4 out of 10 to. I was very disappointed by this one. I love Tucana, Trails of Tucana. But Tucana Builders takes it, makes it sloppier, makes it larger, bigger footprint, and more lucky. It is just a dud for me. I reviewed my Shelfie the Dice Game, which I gave a 5 out of 10 to. It's slightly better. It is Yahtzee, pretty much, with no real mitigation of luck and a short playtime, which is sort of its saving grace. It's about 10-15 minutes. But there's really nothing innovative or interesting there. It's one to keep on the shelf if you are one a guaranteed quick Yahtzee type thing. But other than that, nothing I would say uh, you need to get. And then uh, the last one would be Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto, which I give an 8.5 to. This was excellent. And it is a card-driven cooperative game in which you are taking your one character. It's a game for one or two players only. Uh, you are going to be going up against this baddie, Vainglory, in this case, trying to delve through this deck of cards, eliminate those uh, uh, cards, the, the things you're fighting up against, and take on Vainglory themselves. Really like it, great flavor, fantastic production, and a quick, punchy, cooperative game. Really enjoy that one. And that's it for me. I'll see you on the next one. Well, hello there. Don't mind me reading a fancy magazine about architecture. Uh, it's Chris time, and this week I reviewed several games, the first of which was To Glory. This is a pirate ship game about uh, dexterity, trying to hit each other. It's a 7.5. Fun. The pickup and deliver is not really what one would call deep by any means, but the game doesn't outlast its welcome, and you get to flick things, you know, flick cannonballs at each other. Good. 7.5. Next up, the Chip Theory Kids Games Collection. This is a four pack that we got, and you can buy each one individually. I give this pack overall an eight. My favorite of the bunch being Sudoku Forest, a nice little logic puzzle series. And then the other one that I think is a particular standout is called Neighborhood Hide and Seek by Dr. Reiner Knizia, his finest work since Raw. Not particularly, but these are great. My daughter is eight, a little bit older than kind of the, 
youngest recommended age group, but we haven't done these type of deduction and logic puzzles before, and they worked really well for her. Very engaging, nice production. So an 8 there. And lastly, Loco Momo, I gave an 8.5. This is very, very simple. A light, almost like introductory Azul type game. You set collect for different reasons, and you're trying to fill in your frame, fill in your little grid in a certain type of pattern that I find very rewarding. Different avenues, but very approachable. This is another one I played with my daughter a lot, and she really enjoys. And so, an 8.5 for me, I really enjoy it. There you go. That's been my week. All right, let's do this. Two weeks ago, I took a look at Loco Momo, which I came in at a five for. This game just kind of bored me. It didn't inspire me for anything. I found it obvious on the choices to make. I was okay when it was over. Um, it didn't have a lot of good tensions, a lot of depths to decisions, and it never had that turn in this game where, in these kind of games here, where you have to take a set collection or build out your board, build out your own tableau, you want that turn that's just angst, you know, filled with angst like, oh, that's gonna be so perfect and be exactly what I need. I never felt that. There was always just a punishment with it or it was just uninspired. I did not enjoy it. I don't really care to go back to it. I think there's nothing wrong with the game. Um, it's very functional. The rules are clear and put together. So because of that, it's a solid game for what it is. It's just boring. So for me, Loco Momo was a five. But then fast forwarding to this week here, I took a look at three different games. First up was Tucana Builders, also came in at a five on this one. I found it to be same, very much uh, same, same as the Locomotive, same kind of comments, where it just felt like it wanted to be a smaller game than what it promised, if it will. You know, it's originally the uh, Trails of Tucana is a flip and write or a roll and write game. This one felt like it still wanted to be that. There just wasn't much to it. It was messy visually and also in the scoring, but it did have enough roots in other games like Karuba that that it kept my attention at least a little bit, but by the end, I, I didn't want to score because it was just too messy. So, so Tucana Builders also came in at a five on. Moving up just a little bit, at a 5.5, I have my Shelfie the Dice Game. Now this game is definitely a nod to the hobby, right? It's one that I think is a happy little filler, if that's what you're looking for. You have a board game, friends that are coming over, and oh my Shelfie, oh my gosh, I just put together my Calyx, that'll be fun. You play the roll and write, and then you quickly forget it. It is... It, it feels as swingy as you would expect a Yahtzee dice rolling game to be. And so for that, it's just not quite what I wanted it to be. Again, with the not interesting decisions and uh, just a little too luck. You feel the luck consistently through the game. So that, I came in at a 5.5 on that one. But last up, oh my goodness, am I happy with Vainglory Grotto. I came in at an 8.5 and I believe I even said it in the review. Uh, that this is one that I definitely think is going to go up as there becomes more and more content available for it. They've already announced two additional packs here where you're going to get more heroes and more baddies that you're fighting at the bottom of the well. This is an asymmetrical, it's one or two player game. I preferred it to, uh, but asymmetrical it's not even a boss battler, but a card game where you have this deck of cards, these 18 cards that are your character. And there's so much personality in that character as you're trying to accomplish or defeat these tasks in the middle. So you're putting progress on them, trying to wear these four baddies down to ultimately fight the big baddie that's in the middle at the, at, at the bottom of the well. But that's at the middle. You have to kind of get access to them. The asymmetry is just perfect in this. Like I, like I said, it feels like a lot of personality in your character, but is also very clear and concise without you feeling like you have to learn a whole big thing. Uh, there's a lot of variability in the game as well, which I love because you are actually discarding part of the deck that you have to go through as you're playing so you'll never even see those cards and so out of a, a deck of I don't know I'm gonna guess 60 cards you might only see 20 22 of those in the whole game which means every game is different I love that I think it's only gonna increase as I have more characters to play with and really learn their personalities and find my groove so for right now Vainglory Grotto is at 8.5 that's gonna do it for me for the last two weeks let's keep moving okay well uh, two weeks ago, we did a whole lot of We'll Play It Lives, so not as many reviews. The main game that I reviewed that week was Seventh Continent with my kids. I give Seventh Continent an 8 
because I also compared it to the seventh uh, seventh citadel and I'm sorry I compared seventh citadel to seventh continent um, just so you could see kind of the differences between them a lot of adventure and there's there's still some issues I have with the game but it is a fun adventure romp for sure I also did a top 10 list on top 10 cards I want to rip up in games and I did 41 reviews in 11 minutes um, this week, we reviewed Spark Riders 3000, an incredibly fun, light, not too difficult, cooperative game about a spaceship going er erupting with an app. Such a fun story, really cool, um, 9 out of 10. Uh, series, this is a worker placement style game, um, and uh, it's neat because you're placing workers on the board or pulling them off to activate things in front of you. A neat combo, uh, 8 out of 10. Um, then I took a look at the expansion for Space Cadets, Space Cadets Genesis, and good grief, 10 out of 10. I love it. It's just more cards. That's all it is, but that's all I need for Space Base. Chris and I took a look at four of the new Chip Theory games, these little ones in tins uh, for kids. Well, they're more puzzles than anything else. Really enjoyable, um, an 8 out of 10. And uh, I took, I did s uh, six short game reviews, a uh, bunch of different kind of a mixture of things in there. So check those out also. And of course, we did our marathon, our 30-hour marathon. So hopefully you got to see us play a lot of games there. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Week in Review. Hey, folks, thanks for watching another one of our videos. If you like our videos, if you like our channel, you would love to game with us at one of our conventions. Check out Dice Tower Cruise, Dice Tower East, and Dice Tower West. Fantastic conventions where we play games with wonderful people, a humongous library, and lots of other events and stuff. Also, don't forget to check out our channel, like and subscribe. I'm Tom Basil.